Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. Many of you have been asking me about my FS LTL settings for the sim. So in this video I'm going to show you all the settings along with my recommendations. Please do note that this is meant as a guide and your particular situation may be different than mine. So it might be worthwhile tweaking the settings until you hit that sweet spot. The main aim when setting up FSLTL was to get enough AI traffic for maximum immersion but at the same time maintain good performance without stuttering and jittering. Let us now understand the current situation. I am currently running DX12 on the Ultra setting. The scenery we're using in this video is JFK by any scene. All the features are currently turned on with the exception of static aircraft. We are obviously in the PMDG 737-800. Currently, no traffic is being injected into the sim and we are getting about 75, between 75 and 80 FPS. Of course, this is going to change as we pan around the camera. As you can see, the FPS will fluctuate, but we have a very good latency here, about 15, it goes up to 20 milliseconds which is perfect. That means we will not be experiencing any lag or stutters. What we're going to be doing now is we are going to start FSLTL and we're going to note the effect on performance. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and start FSLTL. The command prompt is asking us if we want to change the settings. We're going to choose yes and we'll go through the settings one by one. Max active IFR aircraft is currently set at 90, which is the default. This is a good number. You can experiment with this number, but I've found between 90 and 120 is a good number to have sufficient AI in the sim. Max active VFR aircraft. When setting this at a number other than zero, I haven't been really able to see any VFR traffic. So I'm going to disable this feature at this point and say zero. Additional airline parked aircraft. This is the number of static aircraft and it is calculated as a percentage of the available spots. So if you have a hundred spots at your airport and you select number three, that would be 30% of those positions will be filled with static aircraft. Now I have set this as 10 and let me tell you that this will affect your performance quite significantly. But I do place a cap on this in the next setting. So we're going to leave this at the maximum number which is 10 and that would mean that 100% of all available positions will have static aircraft. The absolute airline parked aircraft max spare airport this is what I use to limit the number of aircraft. So I have it set at 50, which will limit the number of aircraft here at JFK. This is particularly useful as JFK is a very dense airport with a lot of parking positions. The next one is additional GA parked aircraft. Again, we're going to use zero and disable all the GA parked aircraft. The absolute GA parked aircraft maximum pair airport. This works in exactly the additional airline parked aircraft. So we're going to set this to zero. The max radius to inject airborne aircraft is by default to set 150. Anything above 160 kilometers will automatically be removed. I have found that this will actually cause your FPS to go down. The current setting. I recommend that you actually set this to 100. For the max radius to inject ground aircraft, I think this is very important to leave this at the maximum because you don't want incoming aircraft or aircraft that are taking off to disappear from the view. So leave this at 150 kilometers. The blocked aircraft removal time is between 240, I would recommend 120 or 180. Let's go ahead and this, set this to 120, uh, 180 seconds. I highly recommend that you get the uh, Flight Clan database um, API for better routes, uh, better in route traffic. 
Use it for departure, uh, Navigraph only. I recommend that you select yes for this. And this is going to, if you have Navigraph, um, da uh, Navigraph ARAC database installed for Microsoft Flight Simulator, then it will use the SIDS and the STARS based on the METAR information for the ICO airport that you are currently parked at. So I'm gonna use yes for both the SIDS and the STARS. Blank liveries, always choose to disable the blank liveries as you don't want to have white aircrafts parked at your airport. Uh, this is an immersion killer, so go ahead and always disable the blank liveries and disable the generic models as well. Prioritize just flight FS traffic models. If you have FS traffic um, and you want to use the just flight models, you can select yes to prioritize them over the FS LTL models. They seem to consume a little less compute power um, at the expense of the visual quality. I believe the models by FS LTL look better, but that is just my opinion. And now we are connecting to MSFS. Now you have to give it a little bit of time before you can actually see the results. Now we gave it some time and FSLTL is now stable and you can see the effect on performance. We are getting about 70 FPS now down from about 80. So we lost about 10 FPS and I think for the amount of traffic that we've injected is reasonable. We still can see the aircraft here, but let me switch to the external view and show you what the airport is now looking like. Now, just remember that I have turned off the static aircraft in, um, in the scenery, and this is everything being injected by FSLTL. As you can see, the airport isn't filled, but it's got a reasonable amount of aircraft around the airport. And again, remember that I have capped the number of aircraft to be shown to 50 aircraft. So the maximum you'll see on ground is 50. As you can see here, a good amount of AI traffic, uh, both static and IFR flights parked here at JFK. And the FPS is still pretty good. There are no stuttering and no jitters whatsoever here. And uh, this is these are the settings that I use for FSLTL. The ultimate test would be is as you start moving your aircraft, how much FPS are you going to lose? And are you going to experience any stutters with those settings? All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give the aircraft full power and we're gonna depart JFK. We're gonna make a few turns and we'll monitor both the FPS and the experience in this sim. All right, let's give it maximum power. And so far, so good. No stuttering so far as we roll down the runway, but we can notice that the FPS has dropped to about 60 FPS, 64 FPS, which is still pretty reasonable. We can see the eye traffic to our right. And let's go ahead and rotate. And positive right. Gear is going up. Here's the external view. As you can see, as we pan around the camera, no issues there. We can see some AI traffic there in the distance. And as you depart, JFK, no stuttering whatsoever, good FPS. So the tax or the expense uh, for having FSLTL is approximately 10 FPS in this case. And of course, as you fly away from the airport, your FPS is going to increase. Now, of course, this is all relative. You guys know that I have a very um, very capable machine with the 4090, but um, uh, this is again very relative. So in your particular situation, having these settings will probably tax your system by another 10 FPS. So you can make the adjustments to your settings accordingly. As you can see here, the departure is pretty smooth. 
Let us now perform another test with one of the most demanding aircraft in terms of compute power, the AnyBuild A310. I've also selected um, Any Scene Los Angeles as it is also one of the most demanding scenery uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. If we look here, we are getting uh, about 71 FPS. We don't have FSLTL running right now. I have all the options turned on uh, for the sim, including static uh, aircraft for um, any scene uh, Los Angeles. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to turn on FSLTL and take a look at the performance hit currently at 75 FPS. Let's go ahead and start FSLTL. We're going to say start, and we're not going to change any of our settings now, so we're just going to say enter, and now we're connected to MSFS, and we can see that the aircrafts are being loaded here at the airport. We can actually see them popping up in the distance here, as well as here, and now we have a lot of aircraft, and we can see that the FPS has gone from 74 to about 57, 56, and that is gonna go down a little more. Um, and, and by the way, the reason why you see this is because we have a lot of parked aircraft. So before we take off, let's take a look at the aircraft now at Los Angeles, and you can see that there is a number of aircraft filling up really the airport. Some positions are still empty, but we have a reasonable amount of aircraft in the airport uh, vicinity, and we're gonna go ahead now and depart. Now, the FPS is still doing pretty good, uh, but the taxation at uh, Los Angeles with, the, with FSLTL is quite significant. So we went from 74 to about 54, 56, that's 20 FPS loss. And again, that is an indication for me that my settings maybe need to be toned down a little bit for FSLTL. So maybe we can reduce the number of aircraft, the maximum number of 50, we can take that to a maximum number of uh, probably 30, and that would be a good number to have uh, at an airport uh, such as Los Angeles. All right, um, now we are most interested in seeing what happens as we roll down the runway. So we're gonna release the parking brake and give the aircraft power here and see what happens as we begin rolling down the runway. And as you can see, we're still not having any stuttering. The FPS is maintained uh, about 53 now, 52, but still uh, pretty reasonable. And uh, as we roll down the runway, we're getting no jitters and stutters. And again, guys, these are my settings and you may have to tone down your in-sim settings for the sim um, in order to maintain the same FPS. As you can see now, we're down to 48, 44. Um, definitely, we need to uh, reduce the number of parked aircraft, uh, but still, the sim performs pretty well. And we're gonna rotate. And positive rate here is going up. There was a little bit there of a pause or maybe a, just a, a jitter there, but nothing too serious. Here, and as we depart uh, Los Angeles, again, you can see the AI traffic there in the skies and good performance thus far. All right, so there is one more thing that I'd like to show you before we conclude this video, which is the traffic settings of Microsoft Flight Simulator. From the general options, go to traffic. Then note the settings that I have here. Airport vehicle density is set to 50%. Ground aircraft density is set to zero. Worker density is set to 50. And for the leisure boats, is 50, 60 for road traffic, ships and ferries 50, and the fauna density is set to 100. Of course, this is not going to affect uh, the FPS uh, in this particular, in the situations that we've tried out. 
And for the AI on multiplier traffic, I have all of this uh, turned off. If you require any help installing FSLTL, please be sure to check the link to my tutorial video in the description section of the video. This pretty much brings us to the conclusion of our short show. I hope that you have found it useful and insightful. If you have any questions, as usual, please do post them in the comments section below. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for tuning in, and bye-bye for now.